The laboratory was silent except for the hum of equipment and my fingers flying across the keyboard. Three more paragraphs and my thesis would be complete. Five years of research into quantum encryption algorithms, countless nights in this basement lab, and finally, finally, I was done. Mia, you missed dinner again. My father's voice echoed from the stairwell. Professor Gerald Morrison, head of the computer science department, the man who'd inspired me to pursue cryptography, but somehow never believed I'd surpass him. Almost done, Dad. Just finalizing the abstract. I saved the file for the hundredth time, paranoid about losing even a single equation. He appeared behind me, reading over my shoulder. I watched his reflection in the monitor, his expression shifting from casual interest to something I'd never seen before. Fear? Envy? This is comprehensive, he said slowly. The applications for defense systems alone. That's why the DoD funded part of it, I reminded him. Professor Kenwick from MIT said it could revolutionize military communications. Dad's jaw tightened. You've been corresponding with Kenwick? He's on my advisory committee. You signed off on it, remember? He hadn't. We both knew he'd been too busy promoting my younger brother Dylan's mediocre projects to pay attention to my doctoral work. Dylan, the golden child who'd barely scraped through his bachelor's degree, but somehow deserved every opportunity. I need to review this before you submit, Dad said suddenly. Make sure it meets department standards. It's due tomorrow at noon. The committee's been waiting. Email it to me tonight. His professor voice. The one that brooked no argument. That's not a request, Mia. Something cold settled in my stomach, but I nodded. He was department head. He could make my life hell if I refused. That night, I sent him the file at 11.47 p.m., then backed it up to three different drives and my personal cloud storage. Paranoid? Maybe. But I'd learned to trust my instincts. The next morning, I arrived at the university early, ready to submit the hard copies to the graduate office. But when I logged into the submission portal, my blood froze. Thesis already submitted, 6.23 a.m. Submitted by Dylan Morrison. Title, Quantum Encryption Algorithms for Defense Applications. My hands shook as I clicked through to the submission. My abstract. My methodology. My five years of work. All under my brother's name. I ran to Dad's office, not caring who I bowled over in the hallway. His door was closed, but I could hear voices inside, Dad, Dylan, and my mother. Needs this more than she does, Dad was saying. Mia's brilliant. She'll have other opportunities. But Dylan needs this to get into the Lockheed program. I still don't like it, Mom's voice weak as always. What if she? She won't do anything, Dylan interrupted. She never does. Remember when we gave my college applications her awards? She just took it. I threw open the door so hard it banged against the wall. Three guilty faces turned toward me. You submitted my thesis under his name. Not a question. A statement of fact. Dad straightened his tie, falling back on his authority. Dylan needs the degree more. You're young. You can write another. Five years. I shouted. Five years of classified research. Do you have any idea what you've done? Don't be dramatic, Dylan smirked. It's just a paper. I'll pay you back when I get the job. You idiot. I cut him off, pulling out my phone. It's not just a paper. It's classified government research. I have DOD security clearance. My biometrics are all over the lab access logs. The equipment I used requires special authorization that's tracked by Homeland Security. The color drained from Dad's face. What? Every equation in that thesis is tied to a project number. A handler. A security protocol that you, I pointed at Dylan, don't have access to. When the university runs it through their plagiarism software, and they will because it's a doctoral thesis, it's going to ping every federal database from here to Washington. As if on cue, my phone rang. Professor Kenwick from MIT. Mia, his voice was urgent. I just got an alert from DARPA. Someone submitted your classified research under a different name. Please tell me this is some kind of system error. Put it on speaker, I said coldly. Because if this is real, we have a massive security breach. The FBI is already en route to your university. Whoever did this is looking at federal charges for espionage, identity theft, and violation of the Economic Espionage Act. We're talking 25 to life. Dylan's smirk vanished. Mom gasped. Dad sank into his chair. Professor, I'm with the perpetrators now, I said calmly. My father, Professor Gerald Morrison, and my brother Dylan Morrison. They stole my thesis and submitted it under Dylan's name this morning at 6.23 a.m. 
Jesus Christ, Mia. Your own family? Document everything. Don't let them destroy any evidence. The feds will be there within the hour. I hung up and looked at my family. The people who were supposed to protect me, support me, celebrate my achievements. Instead, they'd committed federal crimes for the golden child who couldn't earn his own success. Mia, sweetheart, mom started reaching for me. We can fix this. Just tell them it was a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? I laughed, but it was hollow. You think the Department of Defense will accept oops? We accidentally stole classified research as an excuse? You set us up, Dylan accused, panic replacing arrogance. You knew this would happen. No, Dylan. I protected my work because I knew you were lazy, not because I thought you were stupid enough to steal classified government research. This is a new low even for you. Dad's computer pinged. An email from the university's automated plagiarism detection system. He opened it with trembling fingers. Critical security alert. Submitted thesis matches classified research project hashtag QE 7749. Author mismatch detected. Federal authorities notified. Campus security on route. Do not delete any files. Evidence preservation required. 25 to life, dad whispered. I'm tenured. I have a reputation. Had, I corrected. You had a reputation. Now you have a federal case number. The sound of sirens grew closer. Through the window, I could see black SUVs pulling into the faculty parking lot. Please, mom begged. We're family. Don't do this to us. I didn't do anything, I said. You did this. You took my work, work that could save lives, protect national security, and gave it to someone unqualified because you loved him more. That's not, she started. It is, I cut her off. It's exactly that. Every science fair project you gave to Dylan. Every internship you secured for him using my portfolio. Every time you introduced him as your brilliant son, while I was just also studying something technical. It all led here. The office door burst open. Federal agents in tactical gear swept in, weapons drawn. Nobody move. Hands where we can see them. The next hours blurred together. Arrests. Miranda writes. Evidence collection. The entire computer science department was locked down as investigators seized servers, documents, and access logs. I spent 12 hours in interrogation, not as a suspect, but as a witness. Agent Sarah Coleman, the lead investigator, shook her head as I laid out years of academic theft. Your brother doesn't even have the math background to understand your abstracts, she said, reviewing his transcripts. What were they thinking? They weren't, I said. They just assumed I'd stay quiet like always. The DOD is impressed with your work, by the way, Agent Coleman added. Dr. Kenwick has been singing your praises. Once this mess is cleared up, they want to fast-track you for a position at DARPA. A bitter irony. The thesis that was supposed to launch my career had done exactly that. Just not how anyone expected. The trial was a sensation. Professor Submit's daughter's classified research as son's thesis made headlines worldwide. The university scrambled to distance itself. The computer science department underwent a complete leadership change. Dylan got 15 years. The classified nature of the work elevated what might have been simple plagiarism to espionage charges. He'd never even understood what he was stealing, just knew it was valuable. Dad got 20. As department head with security clearance, his betrayal was worse. He'd violated every oath, every ethical guideline, every principle he'd claimed to uphold. Mom got five years probation as an accessory. She'd known but hadn't actively participated. The judge called her a mother who loved unwisely but not maliciously. I testified at each sentencing, not with joy or revenge, but with the same methodical precision I'd applied to my research. Facts. Evidence. Truth. You gave them everything, my lawyer said after Dad's sentencing. Most people would have tried to minimize the damage, protect their family despite everything. They weren't protecting me, I replied. Why should I protect them? The real tragedy was Dylan. In prison, he finally had to confront who he was without stolen achievements. His letters started angry, blaming me for his situation. But gradually they changed. I'm taking math classes here, one letter read. Starting with algebra. I never understood why you loved it before. I think I was jealous. I'm sorry, Mia. For everything. I didn't reply. Some bridges, once burned, can't be rebuilt. Three years later, I stood in my new office at DARPA, looking at the PhD diploma on my wall. They'd expedited my degree once the criminal case was resolved. 
accepting my original submission with commendations. A knock at the door interrupted my thoughts. Dr. Morrison, the Secretary of Defense is here for your briefing on the new encryption protocols. Send them in, I said, straightening my jacket. As I prepared to brief some of the most powerful people in national security, I thought about that morning in Dad's office. How different life might have been if I'd stayed quiet, written another thesis, let Dylan take credit. But silence in the face of injustice isn't love, it's enabling. And sometimes, the greatest act of love is refusing to let someone destroy themselves with their own greed. My phone buzzed. A text from an unknown number that I recognized, Mom's friend's phone. Saw you on the news. So proud of you, sweetheart. Mom. I deleted it and turned back to my work. Some forgiveness takes time. Some never comes at all. But success? Success is the best response to those who tried to steal it. And my success was encrypted with something no plagiarism software needed to detect. The unbreakable code of my own achievement, earned honestly, one equation at a time. The Secretary of Defense walked in, and I stood to greet them, Dr. Mia Morrison, whose work now protected nations instead of propping up a brother who'd never earned it. Turns out Dad was wrong. Dylan didn't need the degree more. He needed to earn his own. And thanks to federal prison educational programs, maybe he finally would.